Hello, we're back with another video. This is a continuation of our runtime virtual texture spline road system kind of bullshit. So if you haven't watched that video yet, you can do so here uh, and it will be necessary to actually kind of make this work. This is kind of just a, an extension of that. Jumping straight into it. In the previous video, I talked about this radial brick pattern and I had a few comments saying, hey, like, you know, What's the go with that? How does it work? How do you do it? It does require a texture that's broken into segments. So this brick circle pattern, for example, uses a texture that looks like this. Um, it's got rows of bricks. Now you could do this with like cobblestone or something, but there would have to be gaps evenly spaced in it. This texture itself isn't perfect for this. It is good enough for the example. Essentially, this material is very similar to our spline RVT stamp. I, I like to call these things runtime virtual texture stamps. So essentially, it's just our runtime virtual texture spline road system without the spline. It's literally just a, a square plane that we're just printing to the RVT. So in the material, you'll notice that, again, we're not actually putting anything into the material output. We're only outputting to runtime virtual texture. We've got our road color, dirt color. You know, we're doing the same thing with the, the dirt offset and the dirt contrast and, you know, the, the paths contrast and all that stuff. It's all exactly the same. We've got our noise influence here. The only thing that's different in our material is the UVs going into the texture. So what we're going to do, we're just going to take everything that I've done so far to the UVs and just put it to the side. And now this, we just hit save. And you will see that this is now just the texture. The texture, nothing but the texture. So there is a function called vector to radial value. So this by itself results in this, a little bit wacky. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to offset it by negative 0.5 in both the U and the V. And so that's going to make it centered here. So what this is essentially doing, a good way to think of it is we have a texture like this. And what it's doing is it's kind of pulling this side out and around and it's pulling this side out and around and it keeps doing that, you know, out and around until eventually they meet. Um, and so you can imagine, you know, if there was a, a square here, by the time we've stretched this out to there, it's gonna look like a big rectangle thing. And you can see that here, that the ones that are in the middle, they're kind of regular size, but then the further out it goes, the more stretched they become. So if we did something like multiply after the offset, um, by like five or something. So this tiles five times. Then you can see that towards the edge, this is extremely stretched out. Not very good looking, not realistic. So how are we going to rectify this? Well, best way to kind of explain this would be to do it without the vector to radial value stuff. So what we're going to do, we're going to get the G value or the V value, you know, UVs, RG, um, which is this direction this way. So you know, as we go up a row, we're going up in value. Then what we're going to do is a, a like a quantize function. So we're going to multiply by the number of rows of bricks in a single tiling texture. And we're going to scale that. I'm just going to put that back to one. And then we're going to floor this. So what this is going to do, if we divide this by eight, then you can see that we've broken this up into eight segments. So if we weren't dividing this by eight, what we would see is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But we can't see any values above one because that's just how colors get rendered. Unless, of course, we put this into the emissive color, in which case, you know, we can actually see it get brighter and brighter, like brighter than the brightest value. So now that we've kind of broken our texture up into the brick rows, what we can actually do is scale the R coordinate or the U coordinate, that being the side to side coordinate, by different values for each row. 
So, you know, we could scale this by one, then we could make this one tile two times and this one tile three times. So what we do is this is kind of a um, like extra bricks per row number. And then we add one because we want the scale to be one at the start rather than zero. Because if the scale was zero, the world explodes. So then we just get the R value and we multiply it by this little quantization thing that we set up. And then after that, we just make a float two. We use this as the X coordinate and the Y coordinate is just the Y coordinate completely unaltered. Okay, so you can see now the bricks down here are the regular size. And then the further up we go, the more squished they become. There is a little bit of like tearing here. Um, that's just because this brick texture isn't actually equally spaced. So for best results, use an equally spaced, at least equally spaced in the, the V direction. Um, they can be unevenly spaced, you know, side to side, but when, you know, each row on top of each other should be evenly spaced. So I'll probably be making a new brick texture at some point just to, to do that properly. So then if we get our vector to radial value, radial coordinates, and just put that into here, you can see that we now have the beginnings of our radial brick texture. Now we have this scale value here. Um, this does need to scale to, I think, just a full integer. Yeah, um, otherwise it'll get tearing. So if we put this scale up, you can see that, you know, there's going to be a, a break in the texture right here. Uh, then there's another parameter here just called brick length, which is... So this scale here scales the entire thing. So, you know, if you make your stamp really, really big, then you'll want to increase the scale here. You can even use like object scale, maybe, if you wanted this to be kind of consistent uh, throughout the entire world. And then there is this here called brick length, which just scales it in the, you know, the X direction um, or the Y, I, I, I've forgotten what direction is what. So, you know, let's put this up to like five or something. Uh, and now you can see it is quite bricky, quite brickous. Now on this end right here, um, there is also a scale number. So the reason that we have a scale here, so this is like the actual scale of the thing. But over here, this scale value, which is the same parameter, so they're, you know, copy and pasted. If I change one, it changes both. The reason this one's up here is so that the, the quantization rows scale with the scale of the texture, if that makes sense. Um, so this one's not actually scaling the UVs at all. This is just scaling that mask for the, for the you know, the each row of bricks. So one more thing before we wrap up, if you are using a texture that has like, you know, it's got some kind of glitching because, you know, the, the bricks aren't the, the same length, um, like each row of bricks isn't the same length, you can add this extra little doodad. Basically before we quantize, like this is like the, the row quantization. Um, if we put that into a sign with a period of two, then we absolute that, then we one minus that, and then we multiply that by, you know, a strength value. If we subtract this afterwards from the result, we can actually create some like, like we can force gaps between the bricks. So this can really help, you know, if there are, if there is kind of tearing and stuff, um, you know, this can kind of force some gaps between the bricks. So I, I like to keep this at just like a, a very slight value just to kind of help it, um, you know, 0.1, just to kind of break them up a bit further. And that's kind of all there is to it. And, you know, chuck the noise influence up. And basically that is that. That's how this circular brick radial texture, runtime virtual texture stamp works. So hopefully with this quite niche tutorial, you learned a new trick or two. If you did, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel because I upload, you know, a few times a week and it would be a shame if you missed out on the next videos. 
Also, if you do need help with anything Unreal Engine related, or you want to ask any questions about these tutorials and all the videos they upload, then you can do so through our Discord, which is always linked in the description. And you can always ask for advice in our get help section where, you know, people just ask for advice, ask for help, troubleshooting, and people just just dive in and, and, and rescue them from their Unreal Engine hell. Last but not least, if you do want to go one step further in supporting this channel and the tutorials and the development of Prismatic of the game, you can do so through my Patreon, which is linked in the description for as little as $1 per month. You guys are, you know, fantastic and you keep helping me do what I love doing. So I guess with that, we say goodbye. Goodbye.